Welcome to your Rockwood 20 BHS GeoPro. All right, we're gonna go over some maintenance first on our camper. I like to say before and after camping season, especially because we live in Michigan. Um, you're gonna wanna go on the roof. You're gonna wanna check the silicone and caulk. You're gonna wanna check the silicone and caulk around the whole trailer. But on the roof specifically, you're gonna go around the ACs, around the corners, and you're gonna wanna treat that roof with an awning, or I mean, sorry, you're gonna wanna treat the roof and the awning uh, with a conditioner and cleaner and make sure that they both have a UV blocker in them. You're going to want to wax it twice a year with Carnuba wax, and unless you get the exterior protection. Um, Carnuba wax will help the lamb decolorization. Bearings to, re uh, bearings to be repacked, two years or 6,000 miles, depending on how much you travel. All right, we're going to start right up front. We have our front tanks. Right now, the dial is red. Try to put my shadow there. Dial is red, and it's pointed to the one on the left. But then when I turn the dial to the right, it turned green because I have this tank open and it's full. So that's reading that it's pulling gas. If it was red, it'd be empty. For our power front jack, extend retract on and off uh, for the light. And then we're right here, this little tab comes off and inside there, there's a spot for a socket to manually override this in case it electrically goes out on you the battery anything over about three four days i will take the negative off the battery the carbon monoxide detector will always draw from there and then you have a battery disconnect right below the tanks um, that will turn off everything to the battery except for that carbon monoxide detector that always draws looking under our right we're going to have our first stabilizer jack which the crank is in there you can also use an impact drill if you do have it um, also in here they give you a spatula, an inline uh, hose filter for the water, some toiletry holders, some cables to hook up another battery, um, just some goodies to get you going. And then to the left of that we're going to have our docking light, which is our front cap lights. And then right here we're going to have our water hookups, so we're going to have our city water connection. And then we're gonna have our antifreeze connection. So this will turn into a suction via our pump once we flip a valve inside, which we'll go over once we're inside. And then you got cable satellite, if that camera on offers it. And then for your fresh tank, you're gonna have this white pole right here, and that's gonna drain the fresh tank. Next to that, we're gonna have our sewer hose port storage. All right, now to our water heater. So, to use our water heater, we have this rod, an anode rod. It's gonna break down over time. Basically, once it gets to 50%, you need a new one. It's a good thing that it's breaking down. It's the hard water's bacteria eating at this and not the water heater uh, device itself. This is the drain plug. It's right in there, one in one 16 socket. Tighten that down, and then you're gonna plug in your water. And then you're gonna go inside your camper, turn on your hot water line. Uh, we got to fill this up before we turn the button on inside. So you're going to turn on your hot water line. Wait till you have a good flow of water coming out of that spigot. You can also come out here, pull this pressure release valve. A little water will come out if it's full. Once you know it's full, you can turn the button on inside. Now to drain this, you pull the pressure release valve. Hear that pressure die off. And then you can take this off and drain the water from right here. You got reset buttons. If for some odd reason that flame doesn't uh, kick on once you turn the button on inside. Another maintenance would be these rubber seals. You're going to want to hit any rubber seal with a rubber seal conditioner twice a year. 
keep them from drying out, not letting water in. Uh, your tires are filled with nitrogen. You can mix it with regular air, but nitrogen doesn't deflate or expand with temperature change. Bearings to re be repacked. Two years or 6,000 miles, if I haven't said that already. Looking at our sewer ports, we're gonna have our gray on our left and our black on the right. We like to do our black first, and then we like to do our black tank flush, which is a sprinkler inside there. Trying to spray the sensors of all the toilet paper. And then we'll pull our gray water at the very end because that's the cleanest water. You are backup camera ready. That faceplate right there just needs to be taken out and replaced with the camera. There's a cord behind there that's a plug and play. So you just put the camera in and then you're gonna put the uh, monitor into your cigarette lighter in your vehicle, turn your running lights on so that the two compare. Uh, the table and the grill, I put some cloths behind it because honestly, I don't like putting my grill on my wall. I don't like having my heat too close to my fiberglass and I don't like the weight of this on my fiberglass as well. So I'm actually going to take it off for right now. And they go from the top part down. So you put the top part in first and then roll it down and it will hang on here just like this one. Below that, we're gonna have our LP quick connection. So this is where you're gonna hook up a grill or any propane appliance that you have. This will feed off those front tanks. There's a valve for on and off right there. The hose goes to right there at the grill. And you just gotta push in this and push the hose in. One ten outlets. Um, you're gonna have these little tabs to open up if you're using the fan inside. Got our furnace port right here. A lot of little kids know that, that it gets hot when you're running the furnace. Don't wanna hear bad stories. And then we're gonna have a solar panel port. So you need that import, import if you want a solar panel. They give you a wheel so you can replace it, wheel it around. Before I jump in, try to stay in the shade so you can see this, but there is a black circle tab on the top right corner of the awning. You take that off. There's a spot for a socket to manually override the awning in case it electrically goes out on you. Right, jumping in. I have this off right now because we're going to go with the water heater uh, in the pump in a minute. but. Right next to that, we're going to have our inverter, which we need to turn our inverter on. Can't see the green light. Maybe you can. Um, green light means on, but you got to turn that on to give power to your refrigerator while driving because it is a 12 volt system. For your TV, um, you are going to have this remote, which you'll use source to go to your radio. And you got zones A and B. A is inside, B is outside. Yeah, but that little green dot up there, there's a button by there that you can push to toggle between your local or cable channels if you got cable hooked up from a campground. That is gonna be for a solar chart, or, excuse me, let's blank that out. This is gonna be for a cell phone charger to make the table into a bed, what you gotta do is take the table off the poles, put the poles somewhere in the meantime, and then we're gonna hang the table on these little cleats. like so, use the rest of the cushions to make the rest of the bed. 
Next to that, we're gonna have our thermostat. Just like a house, fan, cool, heat. And then temperature desired. Then we're gonna have our bunks. The light switches do have buttons on them. So you can turn a section on or off. Your toilet is a foot pedal. So when you push down on it, the water will start going down. When you fully push down, it will open up the toilet. You want to put about a gallon of water into the toilet uh, so that it's never dry. And always have the toilet chemical solution in there. It breaks down solids and smells. And then we got the heat miser. So in the heat miser, is used, it's actually gonna be recirculating your hot water through the system. Um, so if this turns white, you're recirculating your hot water. There's also more information on that in the packets. Right below here, we have a carbon monoxide detector. That's the one that's always drawing power. And then we're gonna have our breakers and fuses right next to that. Definitely bring some 12 volt fuses with you. Get those at Walmart or AutoZone, anywhere like that. Then our fridge, no controls, that's actually all your appliance manuals. Then you're gonna have some controls up top there, and then you actually have a power switch in the back to get power to the fridge or not. Microwave, find the manual packet if you need some more directions for that. The solar controller, not much to do with it, it's just trickle charging your batteries, taking the power from the panels and putting it to the battery. Um, you have this max boot button for the last like two hours of daylight trying to get as much sunlight into your batteries as possible. Um, you will have to switch settings if you go to lithium, but if you need more information on all that, uh, go to the packet. Um, go Power has a ton of information if you want to learn more about solar. Um, looking at our stove top, we also got our tire pressure monitoring system. This is an external device to check our tire pressure. Um, it usually works best if the tires are rolling for about a minute. Uh, there's a charger in here. Again, you just charge it up here and there to check your tires. Because if the tires are low, you're losing gas mileage. For the stove, this is your igniter. It constantly turns to the right. It doesn't go to the left. But what you'll do is open up your line. Turn on your flame. It lights all three, including the oven. What you'll do for the oven, though, so you'll put it to the pilot light symbol, push in that pilot light symbol, keep holding it down, and while you're holding it down, give me a second, hit that clicker. Once that spark turns into a flame, you will be able to release and go to desired temperature. And for the fan, light, just make sure that the flap outside is open so the air has somewhere to escape. And then the keys, you just got the one set of keys. All right, for our tanks, the lights will grow up as the tanks fill up. Black, wait till two thirds full, don't wait till full. Just got our lights in here. Steps outside, awning lights outside. Wi-Fi booster, trying to grab the signal if the campground offers it. Water heater, only turn that on if you have water through the system. Gas or electric, you can use both at the same time. Electric by itself takes a little bit longer to heat up. Water pump, that's your fresh tank in the middle of nowhere. Then you got tank heaters, which are 12 volt pads on the tanks, trying to keep them from freezing. Slide out. You'll hear that power die off once it's fully in or fully out. For the awning, extend, retract. You're gonna extend it until you see the tube. Once you see the tube, you're fully out. If you keep holding the button, uh, it'll reel in the opposite way. And then to pitch it for the rain, go to this elbow, pull down, create a pinch point. You can also do it for that arm if you want the rain going that way. Uh, they say you can run it in back, but I push it straight a little bit before I run it back in. 